Hello and welcome to another virtual service of First Baptist Church of Decula. We're so very glad that you stopped by our YouTube channel and have joined with us today. As we typically do, let me start with a question. What does encouragement mean to you? Is it something that you like to have? Is it something that you give to others on a regular basis? Well, today our pastor is going to share a message on just that topic. But first, as we do, let's worship the Lord together in song. Would you sing with me, please? Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, Trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. Then we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. The trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of us shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. From the dawn till set and sun, let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then, when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. Yonder I'll be there
this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall ever Good morning today. Wow, how good it is to be able to study God's Word together. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you to be praying for one another. There are many people that we all know that are bearing great burdens, and we need to remember them in prayer. May we bow. Father, thank you for the awesome opportunity to open your word and to share together. And our God, we have many that we know and some that we don't that are just bearing heavy burdens. We pray that your grace and your power and your mercy would be evident in each and every one of these that are laid on our heart. And our Father, we thank you for this great day. In Jesus' name, amen. Many years ago, 
Dr. Park Tucker, former chaplain of the Federal Penitentiary here in Atlanta, Georgia, told of walking down the street in a certain city. He was feeling low and discouraged and worried about life in general. Can we relate? As he walked along, he lifted his eyes for a moment to the window of a funeral home across the street. He blinked his eyes a couple of times, wondering whether his eyes were deceiving him. But sure enough, he saw in the window of that funeral home a sign in large, bold words that read, Why walk around half dead? We can bury you for $16.99. P.S. We also give green stamps. <laughs> that wasn't very encouraging for him, was it? Now, like that gentleman, we all need encouragement. We all get down. We sometimes get worried. And this life that we live can be very challenging at times. We all need encouragement. We all need to be lifted up, don't we? But wait a minute. What about those around you that need encouragement from you? That need a kind word to be lifted up, need to be encouraged. That's what we're talking about today. 64 years ago, on June, June 1956, a freak accident happened on Scroon Lake in upstate New York. A speeding motorboat bounced on a wave and ejected two of its passengers into the water. A 50-year-old man and a little girl. Now, to keep the little girl from drowning, the man held her head up above the water while the boat circled back. They rescued the little girl, but the man sank and drowned. That man was Dawson Trotman. He was the founder of the Navigators, an international discipleship ministry. Now, according to a quote in Time magazine, it said, He lived to save others. His death was just the way he would have planned it. In his obituary, someone wrote that he died just the way he lived, always lifting someone up. What a legacy! To be known as someone who always lifted others up, someone who was always encouraging others. It's taken me many years to learn that one good word, one word of encouragement can inspire and physically help people. How about you today? Are you known as an encourager? Or does your mind and your words turn to the negative side of things? Lifting others up. Now, there was a study done a number of years ago using children and the effects of encouragement on them. The doctors hooked up wires and sensors to these children, and then they would use either encouraging words and gestures or discouraging words or gestures. What the study showed was that when children were encouraged, their physical energy would increase. But when the children were discouraged, the energy level of the kids would drop immediately and drastically. Now, while this particular study was done on children, I'm sure that they would get the very same results in adults like you and me. Why? Because we all need encouragement. We all like to receive it. And now we need to give it. 
When we receive encouragement, we feel that others care about us. Well, today I would like to leave you with just one thought. Be encouraged to encourage. And I want to look this morning at one of the great encouragers in the Bible today. Acts chapter 4 was the first time that we hear of this man. Now, during that day, the church was young and vibrant and excited. It had just gotten its start there in Jerusalem. And the scripture tells us that all of the church was unified of one accord and serving the Lord. Now, in that day, the apostles were preaching and teaching, and more and more people believed that Jesus was their long-awaited Messiah. And those people were placing their faith in him and what he had done on the cross. I wonder if you have done that in your life, or if there's a need yet not yet met when you need to turn from trusting your own religion or your own ways or your own self-efforts and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. The people in Acts chapter 4 were committed and they were on fire for God. Now the scripture tells us that they were selling property so that anyone who had a real need in the church would be provided for. And there is one man, though, that was singled out for his generosity and his encouragement of others. Would you follow me to Acts chapter 4? We read verse 36 and 37. And Joseph who was also named Barnabas by the apostle, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now in the early church, the apostles were the first elders and they were preaching and teaching, and lives were being changed. And as they observed Joseph, they gave him the name Barnabas. How many of you have had a nickname? Maybe one that you do not care to admit. When I was in the Navy, we nicknamed one sailor Owl. I'm sure you can guess why. Another one we called Wombat. Remember Charlie Brown? We all remember Pigpen in that cartoon. Uh, most of these names were silly and really didn't mean anything. But names back in Jesus' day had great meaning. And Barnabas' name meant son of encouragement or encourager. And his nickname became the name that he had, Barnabas, encourager. How sad today to see so many people that are really downers. People that want to rain on other people's parade speaking words that discourage, words that tear down, words that spread discord, that hurt and discourage people. Are you like that? Are you one of those downer types? It would be great. It would be super if whenever you walked on the scene, others would be able to say, here comes an encourager. And throughout the New Testament, you will find everywhere he went, Barnabas was an encourager. Let's move forward a bit to Acts chapter 11. I'll read verse 22 through verse 24. 
Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. And they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. And when he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged those people in their purpose of heart and service of the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And a great many people were added to the faith. Everywhere Barnabas is present, you will find encouragement going on. Even when the Apostle Paul was angry with John Mark, because he did not want John Mark to be part of the ministry team anymore, Barnabas chose to stay and to encourage John Mark. Let's look at Acts chapter 15, verse 36 through verse 40. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. Paul did not want John Mark with them because he saw him as a quitter, one who would not follow through on his commitments. But Barnabas, he saw a young man who needed encouragement, and obviously it worked. This young man that we call John Mark is the writer of the gospel as recorded by Mark in our Bible. Now this episode with Barnabas happened around 50 or 52 AD, and the Gospel of Mark was written somewhere around 64 AD, according to most Bible scholars. Something happened in those 12 to 14 years to bring John Mark from a young man who is not committed to one who wrote boldly about the life and the purpose of Jesus Christ. Now, we don't know all that happened, but I do know that Barnabas had something to do with it. By not abandoning John Mark and by encouraging him and spending time with him, John Mark became useful for the ministry. All of us should want the nickname Barnabas. And I encourage you this morning to be a Barnabas, to be an encourager. The Greek word which we translate from encourage is parakaleo. This word in its root form means to call to one side, to comfort, to console, to strengthen. Dear friends, when we encourage each other, when we walk beside them to share in their life by way of support and strengthening and prayer and encouragement, a life can be changed. We need to be doing what we can to strengthen and not to tear down. Do not talk at someone, but talk to them. Don't lecture, but lead. 
talk about the other person and re resist the temptation to always be talking about yourself. Someone said, stop talking sooner and start listening longer. I, I think that is a great way to say that. Some people don't realize that encouragement and discipleship is not handing them a book and giving them a lesson and having them fill it out and come back again. It's sharing a life and getting involved with that other one. I want to take a few minutes this morning and look at just how we can become encouragers. Now, it doesn't do any good to just think good thoughts about a person. We need to communicate with people. We need to link up with people. We need to encourage people one-on-one. -on -one. You and I need to better learn how to speak words that encourage each other. And we all look to hear words of encouragement, don't we? Words that will build us up, words that will help us in times of despair and times of trouble. Those are the words we need to use with other people. Now, while we need to speak words of encouragement, it is easy to speak words of discouragement. To put people sometimes in their place. To straighten them out. Scripture warns about this repeatedly. Look what James says in chapter 3. James chapter 3, I begin reading in verse 6. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire can kindle. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. How are you with your speech? What kind of words are you choosing to use with your children or grandchildren? With your spouse or your extended family, or even those within the body of Christ. For you and I, the words that we choose are very important. And we need to think about it. And then speak slowly and weigh the impact of our words. Many years ago, that columnist, Ann Landers once said, the trouble with talking too fast is you may say something you haven't thought of yet. That is wisdom. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. I read in that verse, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. While Patty and I were on a mission trip to the UK, a terrible disease broke out among the livestock of England, Ireland, and Scotland. That disease was called hoof and mouth disease. And they had to isolate the farm animals. And we were not allowed to get close to anywhere they were. In fact, it was so bad that the Irish field was not allowed to travel over to England. And sometimes I think 
in our rush to speak and to discourage, we get what I call foot and mouth disease. And be careful with that because the toe jam can be terrible. We must be careful not to let our words discourage. Now our society has a new phenomenon that was not present in Jesus' day. We have called it social networking. And there's Twitter, Facebook, Facebook Instagram, and many other sites. Now this is the way many communicate in our world today. But let me encourage you, and I'd like to do so in Washington. Be encouraged to think carefully what you speak, what you speak through writing in this medium. Use this great technology to encourage people, to build people up, not to tear people down and call people's name, call people names and discourage them and denigrate them. While speaking with our voice is limited to those that hear us, social media can place your words forever in cyberspace. And you may not realize it, but social media is carefully scrutinized for those applying for entrance to a school or those applying for a job or an apartment or a home loan or a credit card or by our law enforcement. Be careful what you type. Encouragement must be spoken and fill your mouths and fill social media pages with words that comfort and uplift and inspire. Secondly, not only do we encourage with our words, we also encourage with our actions. I am sure that you have heard the saying, action speaks louder than words. Now, while this may be true in some cases, in the context of encouragement, they have to go hand in hand. We encourage people with our actions as well as with our words. Let's look at another example of Barnabas to see encouragement in action. After Paul trusted Christ as his savior, many were still terrified of Saul the Pharisee, who is arresting and throwing Christians in jail, separating parents from children. And when Barnabas met Paul, he took them or took Paul to the apostles. Think what might have happened had Barnabas not taken Paul by the hand and encouraged him to go see the apostles. Probably would have been easy for Paul to say, these people don't accept me. Maybe I don't belong here. But Barnabas, through his actions, encouraged and strengthened Paul in his faith and in his reputation. Barnabas's actions matched his words, didn't they? And folks, our actions need to match our words if we are to truly encourage people. People need a warm touch as well as a warm word. Sometimes no words are necessary. Just the action of comforting and encouraging. And remember, the day is going to come when hugging the brethren is going to occur in our church. Don't be discouraged. Not long ago, I was having one of those blue funk days. Oh, nothing terribly wrong. But as I was studying, an email popped in. And as I read it, it was like a refreshing breeze on a scorching day. 
what that email communicated to me and how it impacted my ministry was amazing. Thank you to the one who sent it. I needed that encouragement. Mr. Lucius Brady, Jenny Miller's father, who I considered our local philosopher, used to say, all I need is kind words and cool water. Wow, what a man that was. Thirdly, and most of all, people need our prayers. What an act of encouragement it is that people know that you are praying for them. Let them know it. Send them a text, send them an email, or in an old-fashioned way, pick up the phone and call them and let them know that they are on your heart and you are praying for them. We encourage people by our actions and by our words. Now, I encourage you today to be an encourager. Now, if you are one of those negative Nellies who finds that only harsh and judgmental words come to the surface, take time to evaluate what God's Word says about proper speaking and determine before the Lord to lift each other up. Encourage your friends. Encourage your neighbors. And you know what? Encourage your enemies. It'll blow their mind and they won't know what you're up to. Now, you never know how God uses your encouragement to bring other people into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Either Christians to come back with the Lord or people who may be religious but have never trusted Christ. And your encouragement has made the difference. I close with this one thought. Encouragement is the responsibility of every believer. I love you. I want to encourage you. And I want to lift you up so you are encouraged to look to others. God bless you. Have a great Lord's Day. Praise the Lord for the message of his word. We pray that you will seek to encourage others. And as our pastor mentioned, it is the responsibility of every believer to encourage others. Perhaps you don't know what it means to be a believer. Well, today, if you have questions like that, get in touch with us. Come by our website, email us, fill out the online form that we have for contact. We'd love to share with you what it means to trust Christ as your personal Savior. But for now, let's bow in a word of prayer. We want to be remembering requests that we have had on our hearts and minds this week. Uh, let's continue to pray for Jerry Smith as he goes through cancer treatments. Let's continue to pray for healing for Carolyn Grover. We do need to be in much prayer for Brian Nelson as he's received some, some bad news this week. Um, he has a tumor that's growing in his midsection, and he's also been diagnosed with, uh, with lung cancer as well. And so things are, are not looking very good for Brian. And so our brother is asking us to pray for him. Let's continue to pray for his healing, for his comfort, and for God to give him wisdom during this time. Pray for his family as well. We also need to be praying for one another. Continue to pray for our frontline medical associates, for David Hernandez and his family, as he, a member of our church, is on the front lines. And let's also pray for our government leaders as we uh, get into the pandemic even more and there is an election going on. We need to be in much prayer that the Lord would give us wisdom on how we need to proceed, but more than ever, our world needs the gospel. And so let's be good followers of Christ as we share the gospel as well. Would you pray with me this morning? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day, for the message from your word. We give you glory and honor, honor Father, because you are due that. We pray, Lord, that you would help each of us to share the gospel as we have been uh, 
covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And as we are true believers of you, may we be sharing the gospel with those around us. And Lord, if, if somebody is listening to this right now who doesn't know you as their Savior, may today they trust Christ as their Savior. We do bring before you requests for Jerry Smith as he goes through his treatments, for Carol Lynn as she continues to heal from her shoulder surgery. We pray in a special way for Brian Nelson in this new news. God, give him grace and strength and his family as well as they gather around him. Lord, we also thank you and praise you for good news in the Willoughby family that they did not have the COVID virus. And so we're thankful for your watch care over them. We do pray for our frontline medical associates, David Hernandez and his family. Please protect them, keep them safe, and give David strength as he helps, to, as he works to help others. And now, Father, as we go from this place, from this time, may we truly bow before you as followers of you and be uh, good children of you. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thanks again for being with us. This has been a ministry of First Baptist Church of Decula, 2534 Winder Highway in Decula, Georgia. When we are able to get back together in person, we hope that you'll join us. But for now, God bless you and your family and have a great day.